Yes, greetings, Evelyn. What an honor to have you here. Honestly, I'm very excited. Claudia is here from Argentina. Oh, we got a lot of people in the house today. Tunisia. Tunisia. We've got a bunch of people from Tunisia here. Nadia is here. Ines is here. Hello to Nicola from Romania. Dimitris is here, big supporter of Sylvia. He says, go, Sylvia, go. Yes, that's Dimitris from Club EFL. Uh, Rosa Maria Hernandez is here from Mexico. Uh, really great to have you back. Today we have a wonderful uh, class planned for you with the one and only Sylvia Sylvia Guinan, originally from Ireland and living in Greece. And I don't, I don't really need to introduce you to Sylvia, right? I made your day. You guys made my day too, <laughs> and that's the truth. I love being here, and. Uh, Great to see we've got a bunch of folks here. So Sylvia will be here today. You can see the first slide of her PowerPoint when she does her thing, especially about storytelling. Uh, it's, it's not to be missed. This is, this is her, this is her, uh, uh, and there's, you see Vicki Holland in the background. We've got a very busy TV station thing happening here today. Broadcasting worldwide ELT techniques. Lavka says, hey Vicky. So, uh, tomorrow, as, as we were waiting here for Sylvia, tomorrow, we have one more class. It's our last class, our final class for uh, the uh, for ELT techniques, listening and pronunciation. But we have another MOOC coming in March, and if that's too long to wait to hang out with us, you don't have to wait that long. Uh, a couple things. Number one, between this MOOC and the next MOOC, we're going to be on instilling with IQ and especially in Club EFL where we're going to be sharing uh, our, our post-class tasks, and that's going to be, I think, very, very uh, uh, interesting, obviously, but also just a great opportunity for teachers who either have, have never uh, considered stuff out there like that to share. Oh, and there she is, just just finishing up uh, Sylvia, a couple of announcements. <laughs> There's there she will be a Sylvia. Hello. I'm finishing a couple of announcements. Hi. And then I'll give you a proper introduction. Just telling, okay. just telling people actually about Club EFL and how in the uh, time we have between MOOCs, we're going to really be able to, you know, stay very engaged, but able to share things when we're not also doing the work. So right now everyone's kind of, uh, you know, scurrying around to get things done. It's not really the time to share and comment on others' work anyway. So the plan is, in between these MOOCs, that will be where we can showcase our materials and help each other and look at things. So if you're not sure about how to get into Club EFL and how to share, nothing to worry about there. We've got plenty of time to do that. So please join us tomorrow. I'll remind you again at the end today, we have a bunch of presenters working together tomorrow for a class on video making. And um yeah that's that's sort of the last announcement sylvia i didn't really say much about you because most people know about you but i'm going to say a few things uh gonna uh relate it directly to myself if that's okay uh sylvia is uh an incredibly important uh person to me as a friend and colleague and a mentor and i just want to mention the mentor part right now because that's particularly pertinent uh, to where we are now with this MOOC, which she and Nellie Deutsch are, are helping me uh, organize and, and, and uh, do with you. But Sylvia was the first person, she was a lot of firsts for me. Uh, the first first was she was the first person I observed uh, on, online in social media communicating uh, with teachers and students alike and having a very genuine and real voice uh, in social media, uh, and I thought, wow, I, I want to do that. <laughs> uh, it's like taking the classroom, the way we communicate in classrooms, and to uh, bring that uh, into uh, to, uh, Facebook in particular. So, so I learned from her, I watched her, I got in her group, Sylvia's uh, English Online, and uh, other groups. And the next first was she was the first person to uh, introduce my materials to a lot of people and to support me, write a review for my uh, book, um, for which I'm very grateful. 
And most important, third thing, I could make a long list here, is the people she's introduced me to. So, so many, uh, you know, people like Sylvia uh, in particular and Nellie Deutsch and many others, but Sylvia, number one, has, has helped, helped me meet uh, some people that now we work very closely with. And it's just very exciting. Uh, so, couldn't imagine doing this MOOC without her ELT techniques, Sylvia and Nellie, and uh, it is just a... Uh, it's just great. So sorry, I'm kind of uh, <laughs> didn't have a planned speech here, but I just wanted to acknowledge how important you are to me, Sylvia, and uh, very, very much looking forward to the class today. Oh, thank you so much. That was uh, the best introduction I've ever had. Um, you know, I think what happened was something really natural with all of our network, and you know, we wouldn't be here without you either. So none of us would be here without Jason, Jason's MOOC, but the communication that we have together and the collaboration um, helps everything to come together. Um, do you all hear me clearly still? So yes, I, I want to say something about Club EFL before I continue as well. Um, we had a lot to build up on Club EFL as well as organizing everything else on the MOOC. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to finish adding um, all of the information about the classes, and then I'm going to I'm going to take it as a full-time project from now until the next MOOC, where I will communicate with all of you whenever you want in Club EFL and build up the blogs because I want to encourage how we can blog together and show all of your work to the world okay so you can blog anything you want on your personal blog and especially show off uh, what you are doing with your post post class tasks and we're going to we can share that everywhere because those blogs are public so all of the work we are doing together on this MOOC is not just inside this classroom it's on YouTube it's on SlideShare it's going to be on the blogs going everywhere for all of the next year and until the next MOOC. And by the time we do it in March, it will be automatic. Everything will work automatically. Okay, so hello to so many uh, familiar people that I know from with IQ and Facebook. Thank you all for coming. And I, I go ahead with the presentation quickly. Okay, so I've attended um, nearly all of the other presentations so I know how much you've learned so far and how much I've learned. So I'm taking this listening subject uh, in the context of stories and communication in the classroom. Okay? Um, I'm going to work on Club EFL tomorrow, tomorrow because I'm finished all of this. My number one priority will be Club EFL and if I have to enroll you personally, I will do it personally. So don't worry. Okay? Now, uh, this is my first page, Listening Through Storytelling. And I put four words here that I actually took from Mario Rinfalucri. Does anyone know who he is? Um, he's, he's, uh, yeah, he's my number one influence, I think, from when I was a very young teacher. Okay, I'll write down his name. Um, from when I was a young teacher, um, I followed his work and I bought his books. And he's very much into storytelling and psychology, which is why I loved him. Um, so he described storytelling as a powerful linguistic psychological technique. So can, can, when I was a much younger teacher, um, much younger. So. Can anyone tell me why storytelling in particular could be a powerful linguistic psychological technique for listening? Can anyone tell me? Is it different from normal listening practice? Yeah, yes, I think uh, the emotional engagement and imagination definitely, yeah. And I think it's also because there is a measure of suspense in the story. So as teachers, we all like to have, we all like to be able to bring some suspense into the classroom because if a student is thinking or wondering what's going to happen next, then they're fully focused. They want to know what's going to happen next. Um, storytelling 
um, you know, there are many, many resources out there where we don't have to write or create our own story. But there is a personal touch if a teacher tells stories to students, even in the old-fashioned way, or especially in the old-fashioned way. And uh, we get better at this the more we do it. And then we can create suspense with our tone of voice, our reactions, when to stop, uh, watch how they're listening, and so on. Now, I wanted to tell you about a collaborative book um, I wrote with Jason and some other teachers and then to tell you about all the other resources as well. Okay, so, uh, so this slide here says from method to content. So we've talked about many, many techniques so far in this MOOC and storytelling is just one more. But it's also much more focused on content because uh, the, story, the story is the content. And without that, everything revolves around the story, what kind of story, how you show the story, and what's going to happen during the story and after. Okay, so I've got a very important quote coming up. Okay, when I saw this quote, it, it kind of symbolized everything I want to say today about storytelling, okay? Most people do not listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. So, if, when we want our students to listen, we might get frustrated uh, if they don't concentrate or they don't want to listen to the CD or they, they don't get what's going on or they miss the facts and they're not engaged whatsoever. And this helped me to understand that Everybody wants to say something, even us uh, here, even with this chat box going on, we're all, it's, it's a flow of consciousness right now, a stream of consciousness, everyone is tapping out what they think, and that's what I love about the chat box, because it's very, very natural, and nobody, when you start typing in your thoughts, I think we're all being very genuine and authentic and saying exactly what we think, and we're not censoring our thoughts, you know? Um, but when we try to force students to listen, um, they just want to express themselves. And some students who are very extroverted or like talking a lot, um, they might feel very trapped being forced to listen to something they're not engaged with. So I was thinking that if we always bear in mind that the listening should be something that will help them express themselves more, and not be a means to an end, I must do the listening practice, um, then the process could be fun and the process could be communicated just like this chat box is, you know? So I think I want to try and have this in my mind throughout the whole presentation, okay? So we can ask obvious questions and some were covered very nicely by Dr. Nelly and Andrew Weiler, and I'm, I'm asking again in a different way. What is listening? What is comprehension? And what about self-expression? Okay, and the self-expression part is coming from the fact that everybody's thinking about what they're going to say next, and maybe they're not listening, and the same with our students. Okay, so this mind map is to help us get a, a very big holistic view of listening and I want to show you something that I have experienced on uh, this blue branch. Okay, this blue branch um, says that for English language teaching um, we mostly make students listen for intellectual reasons. We want them to get information. We want them to understand the facts and it's all logical. What happened? Uh, where is she? Did she buy coffee or milk? And most of the books and the exams and tests seem to focus only on this blue branch. Okay? So uh, what I want is 
I want our listening um, techniques to cover everything. This is what I call whole brain learning or social and emotional learning, that the whole person is there socially, we are there emotionally, naturally. Okay, and that students will be curious, they will want to know what's going to happen next, um, and they will want to create something after the listening. Okay, so we want to have all of this, and why not? Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we include everything? Okay, so now this one is looking at what is comprehension. Okay, so again, we mostly look at the facts. And most, well, most exams are basically like this, or activities that are official. Uh, from books or whatever. Uh, what happens? The chronology of events, we need to know when it happened, understand what becomes before or after, and details. Uh, now, these are all extremely important because without these we wouldn't understand, but it doesn't, it's not always fun, okay? It, it could be very logical but not much fun. And we get a superficial understanding of what we're listening to if we only apply our factual um, mind, okay? So, to, to comprehend, to understand more than facts, um, we, we need to develop this part as well, okay? Uh, what's implicit? You know, some people read uh, texts and they understand, like Dr. Spock from Star Trek, but they don't read between the lines to understand the mood, the tone, the feeling, or what the writer does not say. And this is very important in exams uh, for proficiency and advanced exams. Um, I spent a lot of time training students how to understand what the writer is not saying. And there's usually one question uh, in every paper and every test that asks that question something implicit. And you have to read between the lines to get the answer. So we've got to train our students to get the feeling for what they're listening to. So there are moods and subtle things that are not so obvious. Okay, now when these two come together, okay, then it's the whole brain facts and feelings together. And then they are engaged and inspired and that this will make a difference. That our listening is not just an activity to do. Everything we do with our students uh, hopefully can influence them and make you know help help them to say, I can apply this in my real life. It's not just for one exam I have to do in my life. Okay? Um, and it has to mean something. Okay? So a lot of listening texts and stuff, you know, they're they're functional, they're logical, they're practical, and of course they mean something, but maybe they don't mean something to us personally. So I think uh, we've got to personalize things, okay? So that's why for me this part's extremely important. If they're curious, they will want to listen more, um, and that makes it sticky, it, it helps the memory, okay? Because if they're listening to a story, and the story has emotional impact, maybe, maybe it's on a video also with pictures, maybe there are uh, sound effects in the background. Uh, whatever it is, the more meaningful it is in a personalized way, then it goes into the heart and the mind of the student, and it, it gets sticky in the sense that they're not going to forget it. Okay, so all of these things... Um, all of these things are my big picture of how stories can embrace the, a deeper type of comprehension, okay? And help students to learn from their course books and from news and from songs, but also from stories, okay? To have multidimensional experiences.
Okay, uh, so this is the nutshell, the heart of listening, and it goes back to that quote that people don't want to just listen, they just want to wait for a chance to reply. Everybody wants to reply, they, someone is speaking and they're forming their own thoughts. So, we, we can just try to have our students get the feel of the story, but also encourage their responses afterwards, that they're not just listening, the listening is important. The listening is something for, for them to respond to, and when they respond, they are going to be creative and transform what they heard in their own ways, in their own personalized ways. Okay, now, now I'm going to refer to the pre-class assignment, and I want to thank those of you who um, gave me your answers. Uh, the ideas that you put forward were very creative, very interesting, and some of them were very interesting psychologically with some new points of, some new ideas I hadn't seen before. Uh, so that was wonderful. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you this uh, initiative that um, some of us as online teachers worked on together. And I'm using it as part of this presentation on storytelling because um, some, some of us wrote a book together called Natural English Through Storytelling. And we all just wrote our own stories. And then when this listening loop came up, I decided that, you know, we can use these stories um, in an audio format. Okay? So, um, I'm calling it the many flavors of English because uh, we all come from different parts of the world. So, we are not, um, this is non-standard international English with no... Um, special focus on received pronunciation. Okay, um, so the first extract that I shared with you was called Russian Dolls. I'm calling it part A because uh, Michael Gurry, my uh, colleague who is now in Hawaii, he, um, he narrated the first part of this story. So I wrote this story and he narrated it. Okay, now my story is very advanced um, for, I would say it's for Cambridge proficiency level, okay, and it is quite difficult and even for non-native uh, English teachers, I know there are some words in there that are unusual and some of the words were unusual uh, just because that was the atmosphere in the story. Yeah, so don't worry if it was difficult, okay? Um, I teach, I've been teaching proficiency students for many years and we have, I've written stories with proficiency students who are trying to memorize many, many, many very difficult words and we use these stories together to help to remember and to become more expressive and more creative. So. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you the answer. The person who narrated this story, uh, he has lived in Germany and Hawaii and different parts of the world. So he's kind of a pan cosmian person. Uh, his, for me, his accent was mostly American. Okay, I think he had a real American accent. Okay, so that was extract one. Now, the second extract was the one I narrated myself. Um, some people said, I think I was Russian, or I don't... Anyway, some, some people, were, a lot of people were confused by my accent. Some people said British. Um, I know it's hard to identify Irish because we're a kind of a small little race on a big planet. Okay, so uh, my story, yeah, I the one that... I read was quite difficult too. I've put a little bit here for people who did not watch the video uh, just to get the idea. So this story was about a mysterious relationship between a woman called uh, Mrs. Dimplesticks and they have unusual names too, okay. Uh, a man called Percival Crabtree and a teenager called Rod Bernstein. Okay, Percival Crabtree, it sounds like a very upper class, 
English name and Dimple Sticks is a name I made up myself for the female because she's a very cheerful, happy person. So you can imagine her smiling with big dimples. Okay, so I'll read this part uh, quickly. Percival Crabtree woke up feeling anxious and agitated. This wasn't unusual. In fact, this was how he felt whenever he had nothing to worry about. Not having problems was kind of alarming. It could mean that he was losing his memory, or worse still, that the doom-filled prophets of his mind were finally on strike. Okay, this story was um, bringing in a lot of vocabulary about feelings, and he was a very eccentric, strange man, and the story goes into the mystery of his relationship with his neighbor. Okay, so... Um, so that was by me, Ireland, okay? Um, now, the next, oh yeah, this is an idea for those who, uh, this is Mrs. Dimplesticks, and this is the teenage boy, and this grumpy man is Mr. Crabtree. Yeah, yes, my story is full of unusual descriptions, um, because there's some uh, imagery in some of those descriptions, you know, um, doom-filled prophets of your mind, it's like you have these big um, voices in your head or depressing, you know, something depressing making you really negative, okay? So, uh, you know, when we write stories, uh, we can play around with words and bring in a lot of metaphors that are not just um, everyday English, okay? Oh, did you find the drawings distracting? Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Well, I'll tell you what, um, after I'm going to put some on Camtasia with still pictures, okay, because I can put them on my blog and in, in the Club EFL place. Well, I was experimenting with that tool because I thought it was nice, but I think it's probably nice for simple visual stories, and my story was maybe a bit too abstract for that. Okay, that's good feedback. Uh, yeah, How to Shiny Fall uh, was a favourite with everybody, I think. Um, and we're going to look at that one now. Okay, so the person who narrated this is really from Germany, but she lives in England now. And her accent, um, I think, was perfectly English and very clear and very perfect. Yeah. And I'm going to show her video here as well. Um, oh, let me see. Yes, that, we want our students to listen and understand, definitely. And my advanced uh, story was for adults and proficiency students. And I would only give them that story if they needed that story. Any stories I use with students um, are based on the vocabulary that they are learning. So that story I wrote, um, I got a list of words to do with feelings and moods, and then I wrote the whole story around that, okay? Um, now, all of the simpler stories are intermediate level, and definitely there's a lot to enjoy there. There is nothing wrong with having a little art in the stories, because um, that's good for students for... Uh, their brains to be creative, to enjoy it, the same way we can with music or other art forms in language. Okay, um, Jason, um, can we try to play this one now? Yeah. How the Shiny Fall by Kirsten Hammers. Right. Intermediate UK spelling. When I was very new, I was the darling of the whole shop. I sat on a shelf in the window. Sylvia, if you could turn off your microphone. Oh. Because I hear an echo. And I'll put it back on. Oh, turn off my microphone. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah, you need to have it off or else they're going to hear they're going to hear an echo. How the Shiny Fall by Kirsten Hammers. Intermediate. Echo. 
back on. I was saying that I love that story and I love the video. My colleague Andre Klein made that video and I made the other ones. Okay, so um, now, so that's just a picture of it. We don't need to go there. Okay, so the next story was survival. I made this one on Camtasia, so it doesn't have the moving pictures. But I'm only, go I'm only going to show two videos here today, so we'll have time to cover more things. But all of the videos are uh, in the pre-class assignment uh, place on the course feed, and they will also be in Club EFL later. So you will have all of these videos to watch again. Okay, I have one more I want to show. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Um, so, the person who told this story about the lions, it was um, a children's story, uh, intermediate level, and the person who told this story was from Tunisia, and he's our poet, Chauki. So, many of us know him already. He's well known for his poetry. Okay? Um, and that's his video there that you can watch later. Um, now, the other video is Jason's. Jason put a poem into our book, okay? Um, and it's called Get a Life. So we had one American accent. We didn't have any English ones though. But that happened accidentally, whoever collaborated uh, in the project. So in the end we had American, Irish, uh, German, Hawaiian, English and Tunisian. Uh, yeah. I think that's everybody. <laughs> okay, Jason, can we play your video? Sure, um, and I'm, I'm so... I'm oh, sorry, I'm trying to... Put... I just wanted to say it's actually a song and a poem. I did it as a poem, and last week, if you were here last week, I did it as a song. So thank you so much, Sylvia, and I'll put it on. I got to know this kid when I got to junior high. He used to get into trouble, get in fights, and get high. But when he got a little older, he got more mature. His mom got him in line so his vision wouldn't blur. She got on his case to get straight and get a job so they could get by without having to rob. Every night when he got off, he'd get out his notebook and get busy writing rhymes because he was no crook. He got a look at universities and got some applications got approval from his teachers to get their recommendations. He got grief from his friends, he got insulted and got hurt when they got scared and insecure because they knew he would desert them. Sure enough, he got a scholarship and got into college. He got down to studying and building knowledge. He got ahead, got out of hustling with thugs on his block, getting hassled. A little, a little video from Jason's poem. So I love the poem and I love the rhyme, and that's why I love his rap also. Okay, so that that's showing what we have been doing together, and that some of us are are getting more into storytelling for lots of different reasons. Okay, um. I have pictures of everything here because I, I didn't know if I was going to play the videos. Now, now we're going to talk about...
stories in general, especially for listening. Okay? Now, the reality is that most of us work in traditional classrooms with course books. Um, so, I just want to make this very realistic for those of us who work with course books. Um, I, I spent many years in traditional um, establishments working with course books. And we feel that the course books um, are traps and we have to follow them. And we feel that we don't have resources and we don't have technology. So sometimes it's what we think about what we do that's more important. Okay, so uh, your course book can actually, yeah, I, I said they can be traps on one hand, but we can change the way we think about the course books too. So I'm saying here they can actually be a source for story inspiration. And the main reason why course books don't engage us is because we don't experiment, adapt, and build upon them. So, you know the way uh, the internet works now and Web2 technology, everything we see, we can change it, uh, we can build and make something new, okay? And that's what I do with my colleagues a lot, like even during this MOOC, um, Jason made a video, then Shelley Terrell uh, created a dancing lip up thing and we're all dancing on Jason's video on um, a video uh, production thing called Camtasia and I, I've actually put that video on top of another presentation that will be in my next article. So we're kind of, we're used to taking other people's work and making something new from that work and it never stops and we should do this in our course books as well, okay? So any typical course unit in any book has, yeah, that's brilliant, yeah, so we're going to look at what you do and you can tell me what you do uh, with your books. So anyway, any typical course unit has vocabulary, grammar and themes. So we can do anything we want with that vocabulary, the grammar and themes as long as our students learn it and they're able to pass their exams afterwards, okay? So. It, very simply, you just take the words that they're learning and turn them into oral or digital storytelling tasks, okay? And not just the words, of course, the grammar, the stories in the past or the future. And, you know, we talked about that before and the focus is listening here. But you might want them to listen to the new words or to the new grammar or to get to understand a whole theme that's going on, okay? Oh, to prepare, well, the thing about stories is uh, I started doing storytelling and writing with my students because I didn't have time to do many other things at all. I have very little free time. Um, so the thing about storytelling is you just take some words from a book, right? So uh, if you have one unit and the topic is the environment, maybe you can take five or ten words from the environment and if you have no technology or posters or anything, at least you can write those words on the blackboard um, and the whole class can build up stories together. You know, even without technology, money or equipment, we've got ourselves, we've got our communication with our students and if you're talking about stories communicating uh, or acting, all of those things are in our human nature and we don't need tools for them or anything else, okay? Now, it doesn't take any time at all. I can, we, I can rip up a story in a second. You can rip up a story in a second. It's nice if we put them on posters and have pictures and videos, but we can't do that every day because that's a full-time job. But we can find things, we can find the resources on the internet. So if you do have access you can find stories all over the internet and simple tools to make things really fast. And I've got them all embedded in the PowerPoint. So, um, okay, this page is about digital activities. So, I use Club EFL because um, Club EFL is actually a platform for children and it has tools where you can make quizzes. And, the, and Club EFL they take poems and they take stories and they take songs and they turn them into quizzes and games okay and i i'm going to make videos on how to make all of these things for anybody who's interested and the, the good thing about it is that the platform is designed for children 
our children are supposed to make their own quizzes. Okay? So you can say to your students who do not like learning lots of vocabulary, uh, you can say, take 10 words and go home and make a quiz. Okay? And send me your quiz. And children learn much faster than us. Um, there are many, many children um, all over the world making their own quizzes online with stories and with poems. Okay, so this is the techni technological side. I'm going to show you traditional ways to do storytelling also. Um, okay, so um, I have a link here with short stories, um, and they are all from Club EFL, and you'll see how they work. After this lesson, you've got to go through my PowerPoint again, because everything I'm telling you has a link, to, so you can really see what I mean. Oh, Helena, have you? Helena, have you made quizzes? Okay. Okay. So, now, should you tell stories in class? Now we're going back to traditional storytelling uh, in the tradition of Mario Rinpoche or the tradition of our ancestors before television or the people who first spoke and told stories around the fire. Okay? Um, as teachers, sometimes we're not comfortable with sitting down and, you know, storytelling. We, we prefer to do it with our children or grandchildren or something like that. Um, so what stops us? I, I'd like an answer to this question if there are some people who want to tell stories but don't do it. Okay, are there some people here who would like... To? Yes, when you tell your news that's storytelling. Yes, it is. That is. But we, you can also tell um, actual stories. They could be fairy tales for children, or they could be stories from real writers, or they can be stories you write yourself from the words in their books, or that students write themselves. Oh, oh that's good, Enid. What do you, is it part of your communication, or is it part of the lesson plan? Yeah, okay, Dad, today I want to show you a way where you don't have to waste lots of time, okay? Um, whatever people make uh, is also available on the internet. You can find anything you want, and I can continue to share those links coming up to the next MOOC in March as well. So we can create simple things ourselves if we want, but we don't have to. We can find them ready-made, and our students, the best thing is our students can create most of the stuff, and they should create most of the stuff. That's how they learn, and that's how they have fun. So. After the class, these are all important uh, links that have inspired me. Well, okay, one is our book, but writing a book with my uh, colleagues was very inspiring, of course. Um, but all of these are more established, um, really great initiatives about storytelling in English language reading. Okay? Uh, are listening, if they're audio. Okay, oral listening activities bringing life into the classroom. So, lots of you said that you talk to your students and you tell them personal stories. Uh, that's really important, and I think it's something that we can bring to the center of our lesson completely. If you say, this is listening, we're going to sit down, someone's going to speak, and we're all going to listen, and we're all going to share. Um, you don't really need anything to prepare for this. All you need is a good personality, uh, to be very patient with the children uh, in helping them to listen and connect with each other. Um, this is called social and emotional learning, and it's very much recognized as being important for the future of education. Um, so writers who have written about this are Mario Rinvalucri and Daniel Goldman. Um, it's, this is my main inspiration to reach students as people and not just um, logically to help them to love what they do and to inspire them. So, um, you can have different kinds of informal storytelling sessions where you pick topics and share stories in small groups or whole class. Okay, um, some of the students uh, will be told that they're going to listen to the stories of the other students or listen to your stories. 
and then you can have some activities that they can do so they are active listeners okay so it's really natural and everybody's sharing um, as you would in real life and then after they will build upon uh, what has happened okay um, so they're going to feel it's really natural they feel it's like um, a relaxing time out um, but you can cleverly encourage subconscious use of the target language in a natural way because um, you can lead the topics and the listening and the reactions so that they can use the new words that they know. Okay. Okay, da, this, which association do you mean? Um, oh, adult learners love stories and they don't like the CD player. Yeah, I think because they remember when they had to listen to it when they were children, maybe. Um, oh, Shaki, that's excellent. So I've stopped what I'm saying because uh, I want to answer what Da said. So um, I guess what, there's, what you mean. Do you mean the association with listening and informal storytelling sessions? Well, the idea is the teacher will tell a story and everybody will listen to the teacher's story or some other students will take turns telling stories and everybody will listen and everybody will take turns telling stories so this trains everybody to listen to each other and also to understand each other better and know how to communicate in social groups because some children don't have never learned how to listen even at home for example so it's going to help their um, language development and it's also going to help their social skills okay so da, did i answer your question okay well if if you're not ask me again if you have a question all right or i can tell you more afterwards as well okay um now i want to talk about make-believe comics this is a comic website uh now i mentioned it in my last presentation too but now i mention mentioning it for listening um i love this comic website because it's very very simple first but uh it's really good for helping children to create their own stories um, but I love it because um, they have hundreds of free lesson plans that encourage self-expression and teach students about uh, how to behave in uh, confident, emotionally intelligent ways. And the hundreds of free lesson plans on this website um, ask you to tell stories. There are lots and lots and lots of really clever lesson plans with storytelling topics. So all you have to do is go to this website and download these hundreds or how many of these uh, topics you want or copy them, copy them by hand. They're very, very simple. And then um, you, you can tell your students stories using these and they can make up their own stories and when they answer these questions and make up the stories all of the stories um, are helping them to express themselves in personal ways and to understand themselves and each other better so i think it's brilliant for classroom atmosphere and um, the social and emotional side of learning so i i said here that this website bridges the gap between digital and store, digital and oral storytelling and between functional and social emotional learning. You can use comic prompts for amazing oral storytelling activities to enhance listening in class. And I think if students are talking about themselves in personal ways, they will all be more likely to listen to each other and become closer together at the class as well and understand themselves better I, I love the way everything is combined here so you can lose you can use lots of other listening games or communication activities with uh, these lesson plans and here is a link with lots of different listening and speaking activities that could go with this uh, 
these lesson plans and these lesson plans can go with this here as well and none of these take any time at all simple okay uh, this is this is one example from the website um, make believe the little voices inside you become bigger kids can make their own comics listen and share so you get these very simple pictures with uh, personal questions and they all share their stories and um, the person who created this website uh, does amazing work with children and he, he has agreed to be interviewed by me and maybe be a guest on future uh, webinars as well. So that, that would be amazing. Okay, now um, this is just at the end for people who want to uh, use some audios to create their own listenings here are some tools okay all of these tools are completely simple simple you don't need to know anything you click record you click a red button record so it's easier to make these audios than it is to enter this classroom here okay uh, so you do not need to know technology all you need to do is click a red record button and speak and experiment and have fun and children, whatever we do with technology, children are much faster than we are, and they know everything. So, uh, on Copy FL, children make their own audiobook recordings and upload them. Uh, all of these, some of these are animated um, with voice and characters or lots of things like that. Okay, um, here video making tools if you want to combine some video or visual effects with uh, recording uh, you can use these this is uh, for making comics um, but I think you can record your voice your voice there as well even if you don't record your own voice um, you can still make things to listen to okay Edublogster you can um, make a video of yourself and then build a whole poster around the video it's really nice, simple to use. Okay, uh, now I'm, I go back, I, I went through this uh, a lot and I haven't seen all of the comments, so I'm just going to have a look. Um, yes, Enos has an excellent idea there. Um, if, if you introduce them to stories they know in their own language, then it's a, a really nice activity helping them to express that story in English. And traditional stories are really powerful and Mario Rinvalucri, um most of his storytelling work a lot of it comes just from traditional fairy tales and they're all on that link I posted before okay um, yeah I know yeah these yeah they're simple tools and they're very easy to use your students will love them and for people who don't have technology in the classroom if your students have some if they have the internet, you can very slowly introduce some of these tools as homework tools. Okay? Um, so, what else? Oh, da. They wrote stories using this comic from their own homes. Great! Okay, yeah, that's perfect. The students can do a lot of stuff at home and in class. Okay. Uh, oh, the website, Silly, which website do you mean? Make Believe Comics. I'll get that link for you in a moment. But the, all the links are in the PowerPoint, okay? Um, so, this is all. Um, I showed you the different ideas we could use and some tools. Uh, it's good to keep some traditional storytelling and it's good to mix it with technology because students can create stuff themselves and they need to record their voices I think okay and you need to record your voice because we can always use the CDs and cassettes and received pronunciation and exam cassettes but it's not enough because you've got to bring some soul and some personality into this listening so I think we've got to mix ourselves in with that um, if you can record yourself, you're going to have fun doing that and the students can listen to it for homework, okay? Um, 
Um, Catherine, I think Catherine wants to say something. Uh, okay. Catherine raised her hand, but it's better if you just say something in the chat box so I can see it. Okay. Uh, so, as I said, let's bring more of ourselves into storytelling and listening. And as, as teachers, I think um, if you are a non-native English speaker, and you don't have communication with native speakers in your local area, uh, you might feel that you, you're not, you don't have the right accent or pronunciation sometimes. But I, I, there's a great site called English Central, which Shelley told us about before. I'm going to put that on the PowerPoint as well, where you can go in and practice your own pronunciation. But um, as a teacher, your English will be good enough, but you can always practice your own pronunciation as well. And by making your own audios, you're going to do that. And you have to speak English to your students. It doesn't matter whether you're from, where, where you're from, uh, whether you're a native speaker or not, because it's natural international English. You, you can't, you know, wake up every day and look in the mirror and say, I don't have um, received pronunciation. Um, that a tiny minority of the world speaks like that. English is international. And your accent and who you are is something, a special thing like your fingerprints. Or, um, everybody has their own. Okay, you're a teacher, so you can record your voice and speak English to your students. And don't worry about your accent. But if you want to improve your accent, um, you can do that, as I said, by going to the website called English Central. You speak um, according to what the movies are saying and you get feedback and all of that stuff. So I think we can do anything we want these days, both traditionally and on the cutting edge with new technology. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions to do with listening? And, you know, I've been talking only about listening and only about comprehension, uh, but when they start um, recording audios, and you start recording audios, everyone's going to get more pronunciation practice as well. Um, okay, that's wonderful. So, um, let me see. Eva, do you find that your students are more engaged when you tell stories? Evelyn says she reads a lot to her students a lot. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just re remember that course books, uh, they just didn't have much soul in them. It was like a story, a, some, an event, but there was, we never got to know the characters or what was happening. It was too practical and too functional in most of those course books. So we definitely need, we need a bit of, art or literature and that's the soul of the language so we can't separate the language from the fact that we're humans and humans use the language so we need some art and poetry and literature and music okay uh, no I haven't heard about that I'm gonna write down that okay so any other questions about listening If not, um, we can bring Chase back in. Okay.
that covered a lot. Remember, there's a, a lot in the um, links. Um, just, I'll just go back to show you what I mean. All of these underlined part, all of these underlined um, areas are links. These are all links. Okay, they're all links. Right. Okay, so thank you everybody for that. Yes, exactly. Yes, so um, also now I have much more time. Um, it, the last two weeks were very difficult, but now I have more time to devote to, to the course fees at Clubby Fell. And Clubby Fell is a, a special project for me, so um, this is something I want to do right, and I'm, I'm going to have a lot of time now to be in touch more with everything. Okay, um, we can't wait. We can't wait to put your creations on the blogs and show the world your ideas you know because there are so many brilliant ideas even today on the uh, pre uh, pre class questions I just want to you know talk more to everybody and hear what they want to say because everybody has something new to add oh thank you Claude Yeah, I, I want to add something. Um, yeah, what I want to add is that this whole uh, massive open online course thing is not about us presenters talking about ourselves and everyone else coming in to listen. We want to make it much bigger and much more interactive because it's about, it's about everyone connecting and everybody building on new ideas and new ideas. That's what Club EFL will be able to do for us because it's it's not closed, it's open. It's, it's open for the whole world. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So to build up the network, and, the network can extend forever like that, you know, and it's not like, oh, like today, I did the last lesson class today, it's not over, this class, this life thing is over for the moment, but the um, communication is not over, because I, I mean, it's, it's my personal project to keep it going for myself until the next round of um, presentations, okay, and yeah, sorry, Jason, go ahead. Yeah.
Okay, I'm talking. I'm talking. No, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Okay. okay. So to copy the chat, so I've got it now. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think uh, we've learned a lot, and we're going to push this forward, and we'll all communicate more. I think I had a question from Teresa. Um, it might have been about going into Club EFL and posting things. So um, that's my that's my number one priority from now on, because I don't have to deal with anything else. So uh, anybody can email me or message me on Facebook whenever they want. Okay, and I'll answer you personally if you have any problems. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, I'll send out the post-class tasks uh, in a day, or uh, tomorrow or the next day, and then the fun will begin. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. There it is. Okay. Thank you, Shafi. I appreciate you coming here because uh, you've helped. I can. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, we talk about the brain. Um, yeah, we'll do that, and it might be a focus for something uh, in some other things we plan. Okay, right. Okay, okay. Bye. I'm going now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jason. It's so nice to be together in the class. I really, I just love that. You know, it reminds me of the first time we did that Christmas one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Oh.